Hi, I'm going to show you how to use a machine learning algorithm to find outliers in your data and also fine tune that algorithm. In addition, I'm going to show you how that algorithm compares to traditional ways of finding outliers. So if you look at the box plot method and the isolation for it machine learning model for outlier detection, you can see there is a difference in these two visuals and one in the left side, we're looking at the percentage of outliers detected by this algorithm, which is 32% compared to 67% of the normal data that falls in the normal range. So you can see that this is quite sensitive. However, we can tune this. And a traditional way is using a box plot method where we're using the IQR to find what falls outside the expected range of the data. And you can see this single point here would be our outlier. And then if we, you know, translated this visual into a pie chart, we would get this one particular algorithm, uh, one particular outlier here, and it would be 2% of your total data. So I'm going to show you how to use this and fine tune it. So it kind of matches, you know, your traditional method or how to make it more sensitive or make it less sensitive. So let's pop over to power query and look at the code that's associated with this. So I'm going to flip over transform data. And you can see here, we have our data set that we're using. We have the date. We have the number of users that are hitting this particular website. We have an index and I'll show you why I use the index. We have an isolation forest outlier that the output is usually a one for normal range and a negative one for outlier. Then I have a outlier that works off the traditional method with some Python code. And then I just did a um, conditional column that reflects this isolation forest. Um, outlier, but I'm going to take you through all of the code and show you how easy it is to implement. So I'm going to go over to my second section here and kind of walk through that and then walk back to this particular data frame and how we put all that together. So if you go over to the right side here where you can see I'm running two Python scripts here and one of these Python scripts, we produce the isolation for us output. In the other one, we are going to produce the traditional outlier. So what I've done here is let me show you the Python code. So we imported pandas as PD. And then what we're using is something called isolation forest. And isolation forest is a tree based model, which makes decisions based on that tree structure and then decide if it's a outlier or not. And we call that an ensemble model because it's using two different methods of finding that particular outlier. So then what I did is I turned the data set variable, which is any, which is the default variable for holding your data set, but I turned it into DF, which was easier. Then I turned the date into a string and I reset the date and actually we probably don't even need this. So I'm going to eliminate those two. So what we're doing here is we're instantiating the model. So all I'm doing is saving the model as isolation forest. And then I'm fitting or letting the model learn the data with users. Then I'm creating a new column called anomaly detection and that model is going to go back over all that data it learns and predicts which one should be a outlier or not. Now the default is set at 0.5 and that's called a contamination. So it's, it's really going in and looking for a lot of outliers. So it's super sensitive at the moment. And that's why we had that very high range of outliers here. This is why we have 32%. But what we can do is pass in a argument with inside this called contamination. 
And I'm going to pass that in. And then I'm going to equal point 0.1. And then I'm going to run that again. And the last thing I'm doing is just resetting the index. So let's run that. And you can see it running here. And then the output, we'll, we'll be able to see here. So now we have that output in which we open up that column and we have that, that um, outlier here. But I also wanted to judge how that performed next to the traditional outlier. So if we go over to the applied steps, you can see I ran another Python script here. And what I did is create a function. And what this function does is it just creates an outlier function. And we're using the first quartile and the second quartile. And when we subtract those, we get IQR. And then we're saying anything that is less than 1.5 times IQR, which is a traditional way of finding an outlier, is going to be an outlier. So that's going to be your negative outliers or your lower outliers. And we, we know we only have one that was higher or more than the highest point in our data. So that would be Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR would be our outlier. And then we would have that to determine if it was outlier. And then all we're doing is returning that data set. And then we can use the function here. So... We run that, and if we go all the way back down to the end of our thing, what we're getting is we're getting a traditional outlier, and then we get an anomaly detection with one and negative one. But because when you use dates sometime with Python, they kind of mess up like this. So all I did was take and create an additional column using the index from the add column. And then I'm going to add this index to the previous column with merge so I can preserve all of the information in that original column, uh, the original data set. So the thing that we want to do now is that once we have all of this together, we can run it. Now, remember, I changed the contamination of the outlier from 0.5 to 0.1. So we will see this shrink quite a bit. So let me apply the changes. And let's see what happened. This this visual may break, so we may need to rebuild it, but let's see what happens. And you can see that that anomaly detection went from all the way from 30% down to 11% where we are finding on outliers that are like within 10% of our data. So this is a good way you can like optimize your, your outlier detection. And when people are usually doing with the traditional method, they may not use 1.5, which would be from here to here. They may lower that down, but the traditional way is using like 1.5 times IQR. So this is just a very easy way for you to use your uh, Python code to find anomalies. Very easy uh, for you to do that. And you can further optimize that algorithm by just looking at the contamination. And there are a host of variables that we can look at for optimizing that algorithm. You can always go to the code pages to find that out. I hope that helps. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.